All right, we're on to the third method for solving systems of linear equations. Uh, the last one we have, elimination, we're going to cover today in the video. A quick review of the three different methods that we have for solving linear systems. Um, we began with graphing. We said that was the least reliable, although it is handy to just be able to use graph paper and find their intersection point. We've been using substitution, which uh, just really relied on your algebra skills. Uh, and then now we're going to do elimination today, uh, which again will, won't require graphing paper, but will require some algebra skills. You can see it says it's best when the variables in the equations have the same or opposite coefficients. Um, and just an idea, back when I was your age, when I was a boy, we called this method linear combination or linear recombination and hopefully you'll see why uh, basically combining both of those linear equations. Uh, steps to it, pretty straightforward. It definitely involves eliminating something. Uh, you're going to add or subtract the equations to eliminate one variable. You're going to take those two equations and combine them into one using addition or subtraction um, to try to eliminate one of those variables. Whatever equation you have left now after you've added or subtracted the two together, you're going to solve that resulting equation for whatever variable's left, the one that you didn't eliminate. You now have solved for one variable but once you have that value, you can substitute it into either of the original equations to find the other uh, variable that you don't have yet. And then, of course, you should have an ordered pair that you can check in both original equations. So again, the idea of linear combination or combining the two equations because they have same or opposite coefficients. So let me give you an example to help make some sense out of that. I have two equations here, and as you can see, uh, we have opposite coefficients. We have 5x minus y. That would be a minus 1y equals 12, and 3x plus y or plus 1y equals 4. This is a great candidate for elimination. Because they have opposite coefficients, I'm simply going to add these two equations together. Line up your like terms and combine them. Add straight down. 5x plus 3x gives me 8x. A negative y plus a positive y gives me 0, and now I have eliminated that y variable. So that gives us the final equation then of 8x equals 16. Again, you're adding everything. Now I'm just going to solve this for x. I divide by 8 and divide by 8 on both sides, and I now see that x equals 2. So now I'm just going to use this information to solve for the y value. So then I would put this into one of the original equations. I'll go back into this one so I can say positive, at least with my y value. And I have 3 times 2 plus y equals 4. Subtract 6 on both sides, and you see that y equals a negative 2. Ordered pair answer would be 2, negative 2. And for the sake of time, I won't check those in the original equations, but you know you should uh, substitute, the, substitute those in and make sure that they work. Uh, give me another example here of where they have the same coefficients instead of opposite coefficients. If they have opposite coefficients, we're going to want to subtract one from the other. Now, this is tricky because you need to remember your rules. If I'm subtracting this entire equation, that means that, that I will subtract the entire thing. It will apply to everything. And so the 6c will obviously become a negative 6c. The 2d will become positive, uh, and the 12 will become negative. Something to really keep track of. I might star this in my notes. Now I subtract down just like we did. 6c minus 6c gives me 0. I've eliminated the c. I now have 7d plus 2d, which would be 9d, which now equals. And now because I've made that a negative, now I can just add the opposite, and this would be a negative 27. Uh, divide by 9 on both sides, and d equals a negative three, and then again, we're going to use that information into one of those original equations to solve. So I'm going to substitute that back in for the first, and I would say 6c plus 7d, but in this case we know d is negative three, equals a negative 15. Um, we're going to add 21 to get rid of that, and add 21 over there, and I have 6c equals six, and then we see that c would equal one, and so I now have the ordered pair, one comma negative three, just put those in alphabetical order, uh, but there's your two examples. Uh, very straightforward, just the idea of combining the two, um, either by adding or subtracting, which essentially is adding the opposite, if you remember back from our rules, um, to, to eliminate one of the variables, solve for whatever's left, and go from there. Now star this last example because it is the trickiest. I want you to notice uh, these two equations, negative 2x plus 15y equals negative 32, and 7x minus 5y equals 17. This does not look like a good candidate for, for elimination at first. But what I noticed as a seasoned veteran of algebra is I do have something that I could work with here. I see that I have some opposite signs of my variables, and if I could just manipulate those coefficients a little bit, I'd be okay. And so, for instance, I'm looking at this y term, and I'm thinking, gosh, if that was a negative 15y instead of a negative 5y, you know, I'd be good to go. Well, our rule in algebra still holds. If, as long as you do it to everything, you're okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to multiply this entire equation by 3. By doing that, I will end up with opposite coefficients. Watch what happens. My first equation stays the same, negative 2x plus 15y equals a negative 32. I have now distributed a 3 to each of, these, each of these terms in the equation, which gives me a 21x minus 15y equals 51. 
Uh, does everybody follow what's happening there? I think as long as you just do it to everything, you can do whatever you want in these algebra situations. I still have an equivalent equation. Now I can use some elimination or linear combination and work this out. A negative 2x plus 21x gives me 19x. My y's cancel out, and that equals 19. 19x equals 19. That tells me then that x equals 1. I'll use that information back into the original equations to try to solve this. So notice I have a negative 2 times 1. I'm putting it into the first original equation. Plus 15y equals a negative 32. I would need to add 2 to both sides uh, to try to get y by itself. I have 15y equals a negative 30. And I divide by 15 on both sides, and I see that y equals negative 2. And again, I would want to go back and check my ordered pair in both of the original equations to make sure that it works. Uh, but you see how it can be done even if they don't have uh, the same or opposite coefficients. Three good examples of using elimination, or like I said, linear combination uh, to solve systems. Again, the steps are relatively straightforward as long as you can keep track of signs and make sure whatever you do to one, you do to all. Uh, and then again, you've actually wrapped up all three methods for solving linear systems. If you've watched all three videos and you've taken good notes, you should be sitting really, really good for the Unit 5 test.